book Zarathustra by Nietzsche. I've read it so many times, I know half of it by heart. Hey, you're listening to KWN 605, and it's now time for the Weather Flash with Cindy! Hi, Cindy! Hi, Peter. My advice for today is, dress very warmly before setting foot outside. It was extremely cold last night, and in some places the snow has turned into sheets of... That should help my migraine. Notice reads, don't take with alcohol. Marcus and me, before the accident. Serious, Marcus. I'll meet you in half an hour at the park. See you there. Yesterday, at 7.30 p.m. Lucas, it's Tiffany. I thought... Massacre in East End Restaurant. An especially horrible murder was committed last night in the restroom of...
New York police. Please open the door. Hey, what's that? Stay where you are and put your hands in the air. These images in my head. I must be losing my mind. Sheets are full of blood. I can't go back to bed. I'm not tired anyway. This will hide the blood in case anyone comes in the room. I'll change the sheets later. The body of a man was discovered in the restroom of an East End restaurant. The victim was stabbed several times with a steak knife. While just yards away, other customers were calmly eating their meals. Investigators are already on the trail of a suspect, who fled the scene just before the body was discovered. Police have no other comment for the time being, but stay tuned for updates into this... open the door. Police. They know. They've, they've come to arrest me. Police. Open up. Just a minute. I'm coming. I can't let them find any evidence linking me to last night. I've got a couple seconds to hide everything before I get the door. Sir, this is the New York police. I must insist that you open this door immediately. Just a second, I'm looking, looking for the down. keys! Just a second, I'm looking for the keys! This is your last warning. Open the door now, or I knock it down. Just a second, I'm looking for the keys! Don't move! called the cops because they heard shouts coming from my apartment. It didn't take long for them to find evidence of my guilt and link me up to the murder in the restaurant. Now I'll never find out what really happened. As far as the rest of the world is concerned, I'm just a murderer. New 
New York police. Please open the door. The police. They know. They could come to arrest me. Police, open up. Just a minute, I'm coming. I can't let them find any evidence linking me to last night. I've got a couple seconds to hide everything before I get the door. Sir, this is the New York police. I must insist that you open this door immediately. I'm sorry to make you wait like that. I, I was in the shower. Are you Lucas Kane? Yes. Mr. Kane, the neighbors heard yelling from your apartment. Is there a problem? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was me. I cut myself on some broken glass and I freaked out a little. Fortunately, it wasn't a really big deal. Would it be all right if I took a little look around your apartment? Whatever. Go ahead. What happened to your wrist, sir? I told you I had a stupid accident with some broken glass. Holy cow. When you cut yourself, you go all the way, don't you? Thank you for your cooperation. Uh, sorry to have bothered you, sir. You know how it is. With everything that's been going on, uh, we prefer to be careful. I understand. Long, Mr. Kane. After what happened last night, I'm not really in the mood to play the guitar. I'm in no condition. My forearms still hurt. I've got this really bad habit for a cop. Once I start working on a case, I can't think about anything else. I'm exhausted. I haven't gotten a wink of sleep all night. Something's bothering me about this murder, but I just can't seem to put my finger on what it is. Hi, Carla. How you doing today? Hi, Doug. Not too bad. Is Tyler here yet? No, not that I know of. So? Ready for that big retirement? Eh, working on it. Hey, Carla. Can you tell your partner to pay me back that hundred bucks he owes me? I've been waiting six months for it now. Can't help you there, Jeffrey. Talk to him about it. He's been avoiding me like the plague. Plus, you know, you're the only one he listens to. Catch you later, Jeffrey. Hi, Carla. Hi, Garrett. Oh, wait, Carla. I got some results back on the tests we did for that restaurant murder. Great. As soon as Tyler gets here, we'll come and see you. Okay. 
I'll be at my desk all morning. Hi, Frank. Hey, Carla. Sleep well? Sleep's a waste of time. I'll have plenty of time to sleep when I'm dead. That's our Carla. Hi, Carla. Tyler is still not here. I'd better try to give him a ring. Nobody here. Tyler hates it when anyone touches his stuff. Tyler still hasn't gotten rid of this basketball. Funny, I thought I'd been pretty clear. It's completely idiotic, but it helps me think. Know what time it is? Oh, shit. Get a move on. The waitress is coming this morning to flesh out the composite on the killer. I'm on my way. Stay a little longer. Mmm. Sorry, babe, but I really gotta go. I'll make some coffee. Okay. I'll grab a shower, get dressed, and then I'm out of here. Hey, you're a good-looking guy, you know that? A statuette of socks. One of the characters in my favorite video game. Man, I love watching her when she's sleeping. I've known her for two years now. She still rocks my world the way she did the first time I ever saw her. I thought you were in a hurry. 
Hey, I always got two minutes for you, babe. Only two minutes? Yeah, Carla, I'm on my way. Uh, yeah, I know. No, I, no, I, I just had a little problem, so I'll... Yeah, okay, okay, I'm right there. Whew, girl. Okay, this time I really am out of here. Sam looks like she's soaking, and I know what's bothering her. Go back to bed, Sam. You're gonna catch a death of cold like that. I'm not cold. Oh, look, Sam, please don't start. I got no intention of dying today. I'm sick of living in fear like this. Every morning I'm, I'm terrified that something's gonna happen to you. I know how you feel, Sam. There's a lot of violence out there. But if nobody does anything, it's all gonna go to shit. We're gonna have kids someday. I wanna leave them a world that's a little better than the one we've got now. But why does it have to be you who's out there risking his life, Tyler? Why couldn't we just go to Florida and work with my family and live a normal life like everybody else? Why do I have to wonder if you're gonna die every day? I'm just not made for that kind of life, Sam. I've been around too much violence all my life to go live some kind of normal life like that. I know you love me, babe. So try to understand me, too.
I love you, Tyler. Hi, Tyler. Oh, uh, Carl is looking for you. Yeah, I know. So, you ready for retirement, man? Yeah, <laughs> I'm working on it. What's new, Tyler? Hey, hi, Tyler. Oh. Tyler, what do you know? Just the guy I was looking for. Oh, shit. You remember that hundred bucks I loaned you about six months ago? I'd really like for you to get that back to me as soon as possible. Like maybe now, for example? Jeffrey, do you believe in our Lord Jesus Christ? Because he believes in you. And way up in the clouds, he's telling you, money has no value, Jeffrey. The only thing that really matters is love, man. That's real funny, Tyler. Now give me my hundred bucks before I get really pissed. Yo, let me make you a deal. I'll play you a game of b-ball for your hundred bucks. If you win, I'll give you two hundred bucks right then. But if you lose, we cool. You'll give me 200 bucks if I win. You got my word, man. All right, you're on. But don't even think about not paying me if you lose, because that... Don't worry, Jeffrey. I'll come by and see you when I get five minutes. The waitress hasn't come in yet? She won't be long. Garrett got the lab results. Shall we go? All right, let me hang up my coat. I'll be right with you. Okay. See you in a minute. So, what do you want to start with? What about the pool of blood in the stall? You're not going to believe this. The blood wasn't from the victim, it was from the killer. What was he doing bleeding in the stall? I have absolutely no idea. Tell me about the blood found in the killer's booth. As strange as it might sound, that blood didn't come from the victim. It was the killer's? So it would seem. He was wounded? Did you find anything on the coffee cup? The only prints we found belonged to the waitress. That's impossible, man. That cup was half empty. Somebody must have drank it. What did you find on the knife? Got some good prints off it. They matched those found on the fork and glass at the suspect's table. So, the murderer was definitely at that table. Anything on the blade? I'm getting to that. We definitely had blood from the victim, but the weird thing is we also found blood from the killer. 
Were there any prints on the book that was under the table? Yep, and they matched the ones on the fork and the glass. So it was definitely his book. It looked like a fairly old book. Maybe we can get some more stuff out of it. Did you get the list of calls that came through the telephone at the restaurant? Yep. There were about a dozen in the four hours that preceded the murder. I'll send you a list by email. So, what do you think about all that? I don't have any explanation for the blood in the stall. The victim could have wounded the killer during a struggle, but it doesn't make sense that it would be in the stall. It's as though the killer wounded himself. Hey, why not? You get clumsy fools in every other profession. Why not killers? That's kind of a flimsy explanation, Garrett. Well, to each his own, Carla. I do the testing, you figure out the reason why. Thanks for your help, Garrett. See you later. So, what do we do now? You go take care of the composite. I'm gonna go check with the coroner and see if he got anything from the body. Okay. Catch you later. When Marcus and I were kids, we were inseparable. He's the one who took care of me after our parents died. We kind of grew apart after he became a priest. But he's still the only person I really trust. The only one who might believe that I had nothing to do with all this mess. I'm happy to see you. I missed you. It's been a while. Two years. So tell me what's happened, Lucas. I've killed a man, Marcus. It happened in a restaurant last night. It's like I was possessed, in a sort of trance, like I was a puppet on a string. I saw what I was doing, but I was powerless to stop it. My God. I can't believe this, Lucas. Tell me that it wasn't you. You're not capable of something like that. This... murder... exactly how did it happen? Well, after work last night, I stopped at a little diner to get something to eat. I read a book at my table, I think. And after, it's just a black hole. I don't remember anything. Right up until I found myself in the toilets with a knife in my hand. It, it, was, it was horrible. You went to this restaurant alone? Yeah. Tiffany and I, we broke up about a month ago. I try to get out of the apartment as much as possible. It's just so empty there without her, you know. Were there any witnesses? Did anyone see you? Probably. I got out of the restaurant as best I could. The police still haven't identified me, apparently, but it probably won't take them too long to track me down. Who else have you told all of this to? No one. You're the only person that I can trust. While I was doing this horrible thing, I saw something, or, or rather someone somebody else there with you? No, it was, it was like a sort of vision. I saw a man in the middle of hundreds of candles, and, and there was this little girl. You saw a little girl? She seemed alone, lost. She, she asked me to help her. What happened to me, Marcus? What am I supposed to do now? You know me better than anyone, Marcus. Help me. Listen, Lucas, I... I'm a bit lost here. This whole story is just so bizarre. It might be better. Maybe you should go and tell your story to the police, Lucas. Turn yourself in before they find you. Do you really think the police are going to believe a story like that? They'll throw me in prison for the rest of my life and I'll never find out what really happened. I am a priest, Lucas. The fact that you have taken a life is a very serious matter. I told you that it wasn't me, Marcus. All these years and nothing's changed. You still never listen to me. Lucas, don't ask me to make a choice between my faith and my brother. I'm not a murderer, Marcus. You're the only person I can trust. I'm just asking you to believe me. Very well. I'll do whatever I can for you, but I can't do anything that goes against my beliefs. Look, I, I need to get some answers. 
I'll, I'll call you. Here. You need this more than I do. Marcus, you know that I don't believe in all that. Thanks. something the cop will recognize me. What am I gonna do? There he is. He's lost consciousness. Quick, I've gotta go back up before I run out of air. Control 324, kid just fell into the water. Send an ambulance right away. Man, what courage. The kid would have died. That guy's a hero. He dove into freezing water to save the kid. The kid never would have made it out of there without him. The cop recognized me. We both knew it. It's hard to say why he didn't turn me in. Maybe he decided I was even. I had taken a life and given one back. Nothing really changed for me. I was still wanted for murder by the police. But when I left that park, I knew I could look myself in the mirror again without cringing. 